Hello from National Geographic Education. My name is Gina Borgia and this is Explore Classroom. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. This week, National Geographic is celebrating Geography Awareness Week. Geography impacts how we live, eat, travel, and experience the world around us. Today's Young Explorer will give us a glimpse into how she uses geographic information to answer important sustainability questions. Our guest is Young Explorer Ewen Wong. Ewen is a geographer, artist, and conservationist whose organization, Plastic Solutions for Our Beaches, provides platforms, learning opportunities, and spaces for young people internationally to make positive environmental change. Today, she'll tell us about the importance of both art and science in communicating data and inspiring action using tools like Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. But before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome all of our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Our special shout outs for today go to Smithtown High School, Rutland Intermediate School, Smith Elementary School, Starwood Academy of Frisco, Colegio San Jose, Catholic University of Ghana, and to all of our homeschools out there. Welcome in and welcome to all of our students who are joining us live, who will have a chance to ask their questions here in a few. We are so thrilled to have you all here. And with that, let's get this Explore Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Ewen to share all about the art and science of sustainability. You can take it away. Thanks so much, Gina. I'll just share my screen. Is that working? Cool. So hi, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. My name, as Gina said, is Ewen Wong, and I'm a geographer, a learner, and a National Geographic Young Explorer. I'll be sharing the story of our charity with you today and exploring how tools like GIS can be used to address sustainability challenges. So some of you might know that National Geographic is headquartered in, in Washington, DC. Some of you might be tuning in from somewhere close by, or perhaps you've even paid National Geographic a visit in person. As for me, I've lived almost all of my life on the other side of the world. I grew up in Christchurch in the Canterbury region of New Zealand. My passion for geography and the environment stemmed from exploring the beautiful places that were right on my doorstep. I may be a little biased, but I reckon Canterbury is a pretty cool place. We're shouldered by the Pacific Ocean to the east and the majestic Southern Alps to the west. Here's me, 10 years old at Banks Peninsula on the east side of Canterbury. And this is Castle Hill to the west. You can see the Southern Alps pairing behind the gorgeous rock formations. The mountains, the geological formations, the coast, and the braided rivers that run across the region all instilled within me a sense of wonder and curiosity. From a young age like you, I wanted to understand not only why, where all these places were, but also how they came to be, why they were changing, and most importantly, what we could do to protect them. When I was around your age, I became increasingly concerned about various environmental issues and how they were impacting these places that I loved. One of those issues was plastic pollution. Who's heard of that before? Yep, probably all of you. I began attending beach cleanups, conducting litter audits and surveys, and researching the issue. It became really clear to me that there were lots of young people like you and I who really cared about the issue yet felt helpless in the face of it. 
Around the same time, I started to write poetry as an outlet to communicate the issue and share my learnings with others. I was really lucky to receive an award for my plastic pollution poetry anthology from an organization called Bowseat Ocean Awareness Programs. Bowseat is based here in Massachusetts, and they're a truly incredible organization promoting the use of the arts to protect our oceans. And I'd highly recommend checking out the Student Artwork Gallery. Perhaps it might inspire an artwork of your own. So later that year, I was 13 years old. So probably around the same age as some of you on this call, I decided to put the money that I'd received from the Bowseed Awards towards establishing a charity called Plastic Solution for Our Beaches or PSR Beaches. I've got to say, I was pretty clueless at that age. I didn't know very much about all the legal stuff to do with charities. But what I did know was that I was driven by determination to do whatever I could to make a difference and to help others to feel empowered to make positive change. One of PSR Beaches' flagship events is called Enviropast, Plastic and Sustainability Talks. Over the past three years, we've enlightened 300 young people across New Zealand and inspired them, educated, connected and challenged them to make positive environmental change. Enviropast is a two-day annual conference where students listen to talks by experts in the field. They get to hear from environmental artists and participate in interactive workshops. They also head out on a field trip. Everyone loves a field trip for a practical action event like a dune restoration or a beach cleanup. This photo here is a workshop where some of our students learned about the properties of plastics and how to identify different types of polymers. With the support of National Geographic, our charity's, charity's newest initiative is called Eco Arco. It's a series of in-school workshops that combine environmental science and the creative arts. Arco in Te Reo Māori, which is the language of the indigenous people of New Zealand, means both to teach and also to learn. We named it this way because through Eco Arco, we're teaching young people about ocean science, through scientific experiments and concepts, while also learning from the awesome artworks that they produce. The thread that runs throughout all of our events and our story as a charity is that link between art and science. If there's anything we have learned as a charity, it's that young people like us, for us to be empowered to make a difference, we need to be equipped with scientific curiosity and understanding as to why and how our environment is changing, as well as a creative mindset and a tool set to build hope and to propel us towards solutions. So right now, I'm actually tuning in from Canberra in Australia. It's just across the Tasman Sea from New Zealand. Alongside the work I'm doing with PSR Beaches, I'm like you, still studying at university, and I work at a renewable energy company working with something called Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. Perhaps you don't know what GIS is. I certainly did not know what GIS is, was when I was your age. However, as we all know, climate change is a big issue and it's going to continue to face our generation and generations to come in, the fu in future years. So to play my small part in the solution through renewable energy and GIS is a really empowering thing. So GIS, what is it? Well, GIS is a computer system that allows us to collate, map, and analyze data to answer a range of questions. For example, we might want to know what features are at a given location, or GIS can help us to answer how land cover has changed over time. For example, we might want to know how much of the Amazon has been logged in the past 30 or 40 years. With GIS, we can answer questions like, 
what spatial patterns exist over an area. For example, are there crime hotspots or COVID-19 hotspots in your community? You might want to ask where to build a solar farm or where areas will be inundated or covered by seawater under different climate change scenarios. One way to look at how GIS answers some of these questions is to imagine a cake. So let's say we want to know where to build a solar farm. We have different data or cake layers that you put into GIS to help you to answer that question. For example, we will need a cake layer that tells us where the electricity grid is, so as our solar farm needs to connect to that grid to transport energy. We need another layer that shows us where protected areas are. These might be heritage areas or national parks, other places where we definitely can't build a solar farm. Another of our cake layers will tell us where people are living, as we can't build a solar farm too close to residential areas. We also need to know lots of other information, like what parts of the land get enough sunlight, which areas aren't too prone to flooding, and what areas are relatively flat so that the solar panels can be mounted on top of the land. Once we have all of this data, GIS allows us to stack each of these cake layers onto each other and to build a map or a cake, which shows us which areas are suitable and which aren't. So let's see how we can use these cake making GIS geographic information system principles to find out how much solar energy our roof can generate. So to make a cake, of, co of course, you need to collect the data or the ingredients to make the cake layers. So for this project, we flew a drone over the building. As we did so, the drone's camera took overlapping pictures of the building. At the same time, as you can hear, see here, we were collecting GPS points around the area so that once we returned to the lab, we could georeference the drone images. Georeferencing means that we're putting the imagery into geographic space so that the computer knows where they are. Back in the lab, we turn the imagery into a point cloud, and from there, a digital surface model. This model shows us elevation, essentially how high each part of the building is from the ground. This model is the really important, the key ingredient for our cake. Using this model, the digital surface model, our key ingredients, and GIS analysis, we were then able to bake our cake layers. First, we used the model to create a building footprint or all the areas that aren't the bare ground. Next, we used the model to calculate the amount of solar radiation from the sun that each part of the building footprint would receive. Next, we derived the aspect, so that's the direction which each of the areas is facing. We then mask that, which is essentially cropping it so that you only get the good aspects or the north facing aspect, which is the area that attracts the most sun. We did the same thing for slope, masking it again. And there we had it. We have all of our cake layers. Now that we have all of our layers, we stack them on top of one each of each other to find areas within the building footprint that have enough solar radiation, they're of suitable slope and suitable aspect. And then we added the finishing touches. It's kind of like icing and sprinkles. We did this by mapping the information in a meaningful way. This is where the art of cartography or which means map making, comes into play. We want to create maps that allow people to quickly understand what the map is saying. Here, each of the squares shows suitable panels and it's colored by the amount of solar energy it can generate. So if we click on the map, we can also see greater data on the generation capacity and what area this 
solar array is covering. So yeah, this case study, it's really a big simplification of reality. It's just an example, but it shows us how GIS can be used to answer a question that we may need to answer to solve a sustainability challenge. It shows us how the science of GIS allows us to analyze data, while the art of GIS allows us to communicate that data in ways that ordinary people like you and me can understand and then use to make decisions. So in summary, if you were to take three things away from this session, I'd love them to be this. The first is that you are never too young to make a difference. I was around your age when I started thinking about these issues and decided to start a charity. Doesn't mean you have to start a charity, but we are all capable of making a difference. So think, if you really care about an issue, what can you do to be part of the solution? Second, we need both science and art to understand sustainability challenges and communicate them effectively to others, including decision makers. And lastly, GIS, Geographic Information Systems, is a really powerful tool. It lets us to use internet geographic information to answer important sustainability questions. It's all for me from now. Really looking forward to answering your questions. That's the art and science of sustainability. All right. Iwan, as we come to the end of our presentation today, do you have any other general advice you'd like to give to the young explorers out there? I'd just like to say, as I said in my presentation, like you're really, really never too young to make a difference. So I really remember sitting in, in your position when I was not too long ago. I'm not that old. <laughs> um, but yeah, like if you care about an issue, just go and keep keep fighting and keep um, learning about it. Keep being curious. Um, you can never learn too much. Um, and yeah, just keep being passionate. And if you ever need to want to reach out to me, you can visit our website, drop me a message. I'm always down for a chat, um, even if you are on the other side of the world. So yeah. Wonderful. This has been such a great experience. Thank you again, Ewen, for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me and thank you all for coming. And a big thank you to all of the students and teachers who joined us today. We have a quick announcement that there will not be an Explorer Classroom event next week, as we'll be celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States. But we'll be right back on Thursday, December 1st, joined by Explorer Maria Fadiman, who will tell us how international teenagers from Tibet, China, and the U.S. collaborated in the highlands of Tibet to create something special. You won't want to miss that one. Register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash Explorer Classroom. During the registration process, teachers, you can request a chance to be featured on screen like some of the classes you've seen today. And fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. You can find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and the Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. And we'll also share them with you here in the chat. I hope everyone has a lovely day. Stay curious.